It's great to see a new Australian film releasing in cinemas across Australia right now, a film called Blueback. And it's my great pleasure, as always, to speak to the producer, director and co-writer of uh, Blueback, uh, Robert Connolly. Robert, welcome to Movie Metropolis again. <laughs> Lovely to chat to you again. It's been many years we've been talking about my films. Thank you for taking the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always been a pleasure because you make such an interesting and diverse range oh. of films. And I remember when we last spoke uh, about your film, The Dry, that you were looking to make another family film, a bit like Paper Planes. Tell me about uh, discovering Tim Winton's novel and adapting it to making Blueback. Gosh, I read it back in the day when it came out, 98. Um, I just produced the film The Boys and we optioned it back then for Ron Woods, who directed The Boys to direct. It was We were exploring that book that long ago. Um, but uh, it was tricky. It's big, required big resources. It's a big film. It's the biggest film of my career, Blueback, in scale and budget. And so uh, it just took a long time. I mean, 20 plus years <laughs> to be here now. But, um, but I discovered it then and I loved it. And, um, you know, I think the gestation period of films, you can't predict that, you know, some films happen very quickly, like The Dry, you know, between Bruno Papandre bringing me that book and us filming that is very quick, whereas um, Blueback's been a longer a longer process. What were the challenges in, in working with Tim and adapting his book? Because I think, is it right in the book, the protagonist is a, is a boy rather than a girl? That's right. It's about a young boy and a mother, and I um, was getting a bit of grief from my two daughters about, you know, when I was developing it about, you know, making another film with a male protagonist, and you know, you've got two daughters, and women are saving the environment, and men have stuffed it, and what are you doing, making it? You know, and I, I kind of listened to. It. I had a great chat with Tim, and look, it's a universal story of young people rising to the moment, you know, and activism and standing up, and I think it speaks to both young women and men. But when I changed the gender of the protagonist, the film was financed very quickly, actually. It became commercially more attractive, actually, which I thought was more an indication, I think, of how a lot of people feel that, you know, women are really leading this environmental movement. Fair enough, too. And, uh, and, and this theme of conservation and so on, did you find that there were other aspects of Tim's book that... Uh, were challenging to adapt and how did he work with you on the adaptation yeah look he's great we're friends and we've done the project the turning together and he, he you know i really respect the amount of trust he gives me and the responsibility that comes with that and you know he and i talked a lot about how when the book came out it was about biodiversity but in the 20 something years since he wrote it the issue of climate change has really reared its head as well and so in some of the environmental messaging of the film the mia boshikovska story really starts in embracing the idea of climate change as well um, and that's a necessary thing for any creative work i guess that it evolves with the times um but it's a it's a fable for all ages, is how he describes it. So, and I think he was reaching for a film that could capture that spirit, that fable-like spirit for an audience. You know, a, a kind of family film. Paper Planes, in lots of ways, a kids' film. You know, and whereas I feel like this is more of a family film, it's got a broader a broader genre and audience. Fair enough. Yes. No, I, I understand the uh, the distinction. So Mia Vashakovska, who is so good, of course, and uh, Rada Mitchell um, and Eric, of course, Eric Banner being in the film. Tell me about casting and finding the right people. Yeah, well, I, as with The Dry and all of my films, I work with my wife, Jane Norris, who's one of Australia's leading casting directors. And her eye for new talent is exceptional. And we work very hard to find the young Abby. You know, and we have two amazing, um, Arable Donahue and Elsa Folk playing the two different ages of Abby as a young woman, and both of them in their first feature films, and they're incredible. And, you know, you can have the big actors like Eric, Rada, and Mia, but really the film hinges on the performances of these young, these young characters. So, you know, I'm kind of delighted with the cast. I think, you know, the um, the mix of actors, amazing Pedro Jackson, who people might know from Robbie Hood, the TV series, um, gives some stunning performances um, as the young Briggs. Um, 
But no, I've always depended on Jane's insights as a casting director. She really pushes me. She's been ahead of the curve pushing me on diversity, on demographic, um, cultural and gender um, stereotypes and just to push the boundaries of that. And I'm really glad that she has. Okay. Now, I, I must also admire the casting of the Groper fish, <laughs> Groper, which uh, it, it's incredibly realistic. I know it's a puppet, but tell me about your decision uh, to make this as a puppet and the way it was filmed, etc. because it is in incredible looking and very realistic. Yeah, look, I love, you know, I go back to early in my career in the 70s when I first started seeing films like E.T. or Star Wars, Yoda, Jaws, you know, I mean, there's great, you know, the, the history of puppetry in cinema is massive and our incredible uh, partners at Creature Technology and Paul Smith, who the, designed the fish, did such a great job of creating this puppet, you know, very elaborate, incredibly expensive puppet. But I, I don't know, I'm, I've over the years become a bit more old fashioned and I like the cinema magic of a puppet rather than just doing VFX. Um, and I think, you know, Blueback has a real personality. It's incredible um, character that fish has in the film. It certainly does. Um, in fact, I, I was wincing at one scene late in the film, which I won't spoil for people with, uh, um, um, I'll just say the punch and I'll leave it at that. But <laughs> but, but tell me about how it was filmed, because I noticed the underwater photography was by Rick, Rick Rafici, which, and it looks fantastic but i think you had four puppeteers involved to to make the movement look real all that sort of thing yeah yeah you can't put electricity into the water so you know it's all mechanical so the fish with the you know puppet has it you know cables that come down to it and um yeah there's an amazing little film about the making of that puppet and um, people can access that if they go to my uh, Facebook account, um, just Robert Connolly, it's available and open. And, they, and I've posted the little video, it's a four minute video about making it. And um, you can get to see the puppeteers at work. It's incredible. The one great thing, you talked to Mia Wachikowska, she said when she swam with the puppet, she could have an emotional reaction to it, as opposed to if it had just been visual effects and she had to imagine it. And you can kind of see that in the strength of the performances. Uh, oh look, absolutely! It, it it works so well, and um, and when you say that there are cables that are attached, etc., obviously that would be would have been CGI'd out of the uh, <laughs> the final. That's fine. Well, that's fine. They're removed. You can't see them. You can't see the strings that the puppet. Now you can't. It's all, it's all <laughs> and tell me about location work because I think it was shot in WA. Yeah, it was in. Uh... The framing story is on the Ningaloo Reef at Exmouth, but the majority of the film is set in Bremer Bay, which is in the, the southeast of Western Australia, right at the bottom of Australia. Amazing part of the world. We live there during COVID. We got the crew in through quarantine and we based ourselves there for many months. And um, no one of the great, great adventures of my life, actually. And it's so interesting. I've been speaking to so many filmmakers about shooting during COVID. And, and of course, there are so many challenges in the health and safety aspects of shooting during that period of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that was good. I mean, the community were very appreciative of the extent we went to to be COVID safe. In Western Australia, everyone from the eastern coast had to do two weeks quarantine. You know, so actors like Mia and Eric Banner and everyone who's in it all had to come and do their two weeks quarantine. But people did, people did. And um, I'm really grateful to them, actually. The, the, it's the lengths people went to to make that film during that time and to have made a film that's really ultimately quite a joyful and optimistic celebration of activism and saving the environment and, um, you know, it was kind of a real, I don't know, a real boost to do that, um, you know, at a time that um, I guess, you know, we were all doing it pretty tough, you know, and um, some more than others, a really tough time for the world. That's why I'm really happy that we kind of offer this film up to the world now, you know, this really optimistic celebration of our oceans. It certainly is. It, it is very optimistic and, and positive message and so on, which uh, I think would appeal to uh, a wide 
uh, audience, which is uh, which is great to see. Going back to casting, I noticed with uh, the younger um, Mia uh, Ilsa Fogg and the older Rada Mitchell, Liz Alexander, uh, you, there are some really interesting uh, actors involved. Were they um, easy to find? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all great actors and some I know personally, some I don't, but, you know, Liz Alexander is one of our great actors. You know, I, I was just delighted to kind of bring together these people working together in a film. Um, but I think the great triumph for me was having this character, Abby, at three different ages, at eight, at 15 and at 30, and to have these three actors. And there was one day where everyone overlapped on set. It was great. And there was Mia, Ilsa and Ariel all there. It was fantastic. You know, and they all got to meet the three Abbeys. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And and it's interesting you mention that because you're juggling three time periods, basically, and, and I suppose yeah. uh, making that a cohesive narrative going uh, back and forth uh, was part of the challenge of the scripting, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. An incredible collaboration with Nick Myers, my editor, who did Paper Planes and Balabo and editing the film. Um you know, because it is, it's an incredible challenge to juggle the different time frames. But I love that about cinema. I love this idea someone, you know, said to me, if you look at your life, you know, how much in any given day do you think about the past, the present and the future? And we think about all three all day in, in, a, in a balance. And I think cinema does that really well. Cinema can show different time frames and how they're hand in glove, really, in our life. So... If you look back through all my films, they, they all do tend to have different time frames that they move between. Yes. And and apart from uh, Rick's uh, cinematography underwater, Andrew Comis did the uh, above ground yeah. <laughs> cinematography. That is incredible. Yeah. 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 The film has a real, um, a, a shiny, uh, shining look to it. So it looks in, incredibly contemporary, uh, et cetera. So that must have been part of your process. Yeah, we use, you know, much like the dry, these new large format camera systems and trying to make it feel epic and like you have to see it at the cinema and, you know, you get the kind of massive impact of that. No, it's a it's very significant ambition of ours to make these works as cinematic as we can. Yes. And I must also commend the music score by Nigel Westlake. Tell me about uh, yeah, Nigel, using him. Yeah, Nigel, great composer, the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. People would know his work from Babe and Paper Planes and the big um, IMAX films he did with John Wiley, like Antarctica. He's an incredible composer. And he's got a deeply humanist quality to his music. He looks into the human soul with the music. It's very and profoundly moving. Um, so it was great to work with him again. His score on Paper Planes was amazing and I always thought it was a large part of why that film was successful. So, yep. no, no, he's... Uh, He's one of our great composers. Great to work with. <laughs> Certainly is. Now the film's on on release uh, across Australia. Uh, I, yeah. I'm I'm assuming, of course, the film Blueback will have a lot of currency overseas as well. Yeah, yeah. I head off uh, this Wednesday to the Sundance Film Festival, where it has its US premiere this Friday night. So this coming Friday night, we'll be having our premiere in Salt Lake City, and uh, yeah, so it's it's all. Pretty crazy at the moment. Life's busy and the film is having a massive international life, travelling all over the place. So it's just been released in Germany, in France and the UK next and then the US. So, yeah, watch this space. It's going to have a uh, have a really good life. And and that's a wonderful way to showcase a part of Australia to the world too, I think, which is really wonderful. Oh, that's excellent news, and that's that's terrific to see the film getting such a, such great audiences and, uh, and overseas. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to mention, Rob, I noticed that you're also producer of Emily, which is now on release. Yeah, another amazing um, gift in my career, really, to work with Frances O'Connor on her uh, directing debut uh, about Emily Bronte. Um, it's a beautiful film. Emma Mackey, who people know from the TV series Sex Education, directed by Frances, who I had directed as an actor in my film Three Dollars many years ago, but she directs this. It's a beautiful bit of cinema. It's in cinemas also at the moment. Um, and quite wonderful to have these two films playing in cinemas for Australian audiences right now. No, thanks for asking about that film. We're really delighted about that film. Uh, it's an incredible portrait of this great writer and, and the uh, 
speculation about her life and what led her to write such an incredible novel. But, um, but uh, yeah, no, for, for audiences, I think um, you also seen an actress in Emma Mackey's performance that's going to have a huge career. She's absolutely incredible. She is. And I was really intrigued by the uh, the construction of the story of how uh, Emily created Wuthering Heights and, and this, uh, 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 and, and this uh, I suppose, approach about how it could have happened uh, because yeah. there's very little documented about uh, Emily Bronte's That's life. That's right. That's right. Fran's really investigated the history, but she's tried to make a hypothetical work, you know, looking at the, the time. And it's a strong work about a young woman standing up to the the pressures and the conformity expected of people, uh, particularly at that time of history. And, um, yeah, no, it's great. It's fun. Really, really good film. Fran Francis has done a fantastic job. It'll be really exciting to see what she directs next. Absolutely. I uh, fully endorse that. And uh, and with your such a intriguing array of films, uh, Robert, what's next for you? Uh, look, I'm finishing the sequel to The Dry at the moment, Force of Nature. So uh, we're in the post-production on that. So that will come out later in the year. So uh, that's very exciting to bring the sequel to the drive to Australian audiences. So, yep, post-production. Oh, that'll be finished within the month. Okay. When do you plan to release the film? Later in the year. I think it, they're setting a date soon. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but oh, this terrific. Year, we'll get to, get to see it. That is fantastic. Robert, as always, it's such a great pleasure talking to you. Blueback in cinemas at the moment, Emily in cinemas at the moment. We've been speaking to Robert Connolly, who's the uh, director, uh, producer and co-writer of Blueback. Rob, as always, thanks so much for talking with me. No worries, terrific. Lovely to chat, Peter. All the best. Bye-bye. See you, mate. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you.